Hi everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about Lyme disease. So, let's get into it. Lyme disease is the most common vector-borne illness here in the United States. It is transmitted by ticks. So, black-legged ticks, sometimes also called deer ticks, that's how people get it. So, that's how humans get it. The tick must be attached for 36 to 48 hours. So that's why if you do go somewhere in the woods and you are exposed and you do have, you know, a tick on you, removing it right away is going to help prevent Lyme disease. Some other big things to know, the ticks themselves are not the problem. It's the fact that they carry the Lyme bacteria, okay? So they are transmitting that to the humans. But a good thing to know is it's not contagious. So person to person, if you have Lyme disease, you're not gonna give it to somebody else by coughing on them, breathing on them, things like that. It's only transmitted by the ticks. So now that we know that, let's talk about the symptoms. This unfortunately is one of those things that can last a very, very long time. So the symptoms are kind of broken up into like, early symptoms, later symptoms, and then even after you've recovered, you could still have long-term effects. So starting with the early symptoms, usually the first three to 30 days after the bite, the patient will report fever, headache, fatigue, muscle and joint aches, and swollen lymph nodes. So what does that sound like? That kind of sounds like the flu, right? Kind of those like flu generalized symptoms. But how do we know? Okay, how do we know it's not just the flu, right? So the most common like hallmark sign of Lyme disease is this rash. So this rash has a special target or bullseye appearance and it occurs in approximately 70 to 80% of all people who get Lyme disease. So it's kind of known for being like, okay, this is the sign. This is the sign that they might have it. It usually begins at the site of the bite approximately seven days after, but this is gonna vary person to person, and may appear on any area of the body. And I'll go ahead and I'll insert a picture of what this rash looks like. Later signs and symptoms occur weeks to even months after they've been bitten. These can include Headaches, like severe headaches, not like the headaches they were having before, but much more severe headaches and neck stiffness. A facial palsy. Arthritis, sometimes this is even called Lyme arthritis, so the inflammation of like the joints, so they're having like these aches and pains in their joints. Something called Lyme carditis, which is um, an irregular heartbeat. Dizziness, inflammation of the brain and spinal cord. So this can lead to meningitis and then nerve pain. So like shooting or numbness and tingling pains in their extremities. Now, I do want to point out that this doesn't happen to everybody. So not everybody that gets Lyme disease is automatically going to have arthritis and the palsy and meningitis and things like that. The idea of this, hopefully, is that it gets diagnosed right away and treated right away. So none of this stuff happens. But we're just going to pretend like our patient didn't do anything, okay? They didn't recognize the signs. They thought it was the flu. Maybe they didn't get that hallmark rash, right? And now it's been weeks to months after exposure, and they're starting to have some of these signs and symptoms. So these are later signs and symptoms, but hopefully we don't even let it get to this point. So the next thing I want to talk about is the treatment. And then what can happen after this stage? So after somebody has recovered from Lyme disease. So how do we treat Lyme disease? Well, it's a bacteria, right? So antibiotics. And the best course of treatment is done in those early stages. So hopefully those later signs and symptoms won't even happen. So our nursing care involves giving antibiotics. And these are the three main antibiotics they might give. And it's all going to depend on the age, the gender of the patient, um, are they pregnant, are they breastfeeding, things like that. So it depends on who the individual is, um, who what the doctor is going to decide to give. And you have options. Um, hopefully, right, we get it in time and they can start you on a routine oral dose of antibiotics for about 14 to 21 days. And you have to take the full course of your antibiotics, right? 
If it's much more serious, if you're starting to have the central nervous system signs and symptoms going on, if you're at that point, then they're probably going to recommend IV antibiotics, and you'll be on a course of those for 14 to 28 days. Other things we're going to want to do is control those symptoms, right? So analgesics for their joint pain and discomfort, antipyretics to bring that fever down, and we want to promote rest, right? Because they're going to feel tired, they're going to be fatigued. So we want to promote rest in these patients. So that third thing I was talking about where we had, you know, the early signs and symptoms, the later signs and symptoms, the last thing is actually post-Lyme disease syndrome. So patients who have not been treated adequately enough or quick enough, or maybe they even have been treated adequately enough, might have this post-Lyme disease syndrome. And this is where they will report issues with mobility, so like balance and coordination, and cognitive skills. So a lot of people who've had Lyme disease will say, you know, I had that years ago, but it's still affecting me. I feel like I'm having like memory loss issues, or you know, my brain's just kind of fuzzy that kind of stuff, that is what they will report. So our goal here as the nurse is to ease any pain and discomfort because the mobility issues, a lot of times they have to do with pain in the joints and things like that. So our goal here really is to help ease pain and discomfort and recovery can take anywhere from several months to several years, so a long, long time. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is how is this diagnosed? The CDC recommends a two-step process for diagnosing this. It is a blood test, so what they will do is they're going to do an ELISA checking for antibodies, and if that comes back positive, then they're going to do the Western blot. If it comes back negative, then they don't do the second part. So then the second part is really just to confirm the positive ELISA. And so these are blood tests that they're going to do. One thing worth knowing, though, is antibodies can take several weeks after exposure to develop. So just because somebody, you know, got tested and it was negative, if they were very, very recently exposed, they might not have had the antibodies develop yet. So it doesn't mean that they're good to go, right? So if they were tested too soon after exposure, they might not have those antibodies. The last thing I wanted to do in this video is give you a couple of tips on how to handle or prevent Lyme disease from happening. Just a few tips. You want to avoid areas where ticks might be, or if you do go into those areas, you enjoy hiking in the woods and things like that, you want to protect yourself and wear protective clothing. And then when you leave, you want to make sure you check yourself for ticks or check somebody else. And if you have an animal with you, like a pet dog or something like that, you want to check your pet as well because they also can have ticks. You're at highest risk for this in the spring and the summer months because that's when they feed. If you have a wooded area in your backyard, you want to clear the wood or the underbrush, kind of keep it away from the house. Same thing with wood piles. You want to keep wood piles in lots of sunlight. If you do have a tick on you, you do have to remove it. They suggest using tweezers and pulling at where the mouth part is, not the body part. So remove with tweezers where the mouth is and pull. Then wash with soap and water. They also recommend marking the date that this happened, so the date of the bite, on your calendar and then monitoring yourself for symptoms for the next 30 days, just in case. That way you can know when it happened exactly if you do become symptomatic and you can report it to your doctor. So that was my video on Lyme disease. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.